Which of these biomarkers is associated with a higher odds of living to 100 years? So you saw the title to the video, you already know the answer, it's uric acid. But let's take a look at the actual data. In terms of the biomarkers in this study, they included total cholesterol, glucose, creatinine, uric acid, alanine and aspartate, amino transferase, ALAT and ASAT, albumin, GGT or gamma glutamyl transferase, alkaline phosphatase, ALP, lactate dehydrogenase, LD, iron, and total iron binding capacity, TIBC. In terms of the data, that's what we'll see here. On the x-axis, we've got the odds ratio for living to 100 years, and that's plotted against the concentration for each of these biomarkers. In terms of what's significant, we put up a red line at the odds ratio of 1, and when the horizontal line to the left and right of the circles is completely to the right, or completely to the left of that red line, we have a significant association. So in terms of what's significant, we'll start off with uric acid. When uric acid levels were less than 4.17 milligrams per deciliter, or 248 micromolar, that was associated with a significantly higher odds of living to 100 years. As we can see that the horizontal line to the left and right of the circle is completely to the right of that odds ratio, the red line, of 1. In terms of the numerical value, it's a 28% higher odds of living to 100 in association with uric, uric acid values that were less than 4.17 milligrams per deciliter. And in terms of where I'm getting the 28% from, you can see that, they, see that the OR, the odds ratio, is 1.28. That's 28%. In terms of what the data in parentheses means, that's the numerical value that corresponds to the horizontal line to the left and right of the circle. And as you can see, that it's 1.03 to 1.6 completely to the right, completely greater than 1, so that value for uric acid, less than 4.17, is significantly associated with the higher odds of living to 100. In terms of the proportion of centenarians who were able to get to 100 years old with uric acid levels that low, it was 4%. On the other hand, when uric acid levels were greater than 6.5 milligrams per deciliter, or greater than 387 micromolar, that was significantly associated with a decreased odds of reaching 100 years. And numerically, it was a 46% lower odds. In terms of the proportion of centenarians who had uric acid levels that high and reached centenarian status, it was only 1.2%. And if you go down the values in the proportion of centenarians column, you can see that 4% for the low uric acid and 1.2% for the high uric acid values are the lowest and highest values for any biomarker in that column, respectively. But uric acid isn't the only biomarker that was associated with an increased odds of living to 100. The other on this list is gamma glutamyl transferase, GGT. When it was 18 to 23 units per liter, or 0.31 to 0.39 microcats per liter, that was associated with a significantly higher odds of living to 100, more specifically a 33% higher odds. In terms of the proportion of centenarians who had values in the 18 to 23 range, it was 3.6%, not quite as high as relatively low uric acid, but still pretty high relative to the other biomarkers on this list. On the other hand, when GGT was relatively high, greater than 42 units per liter, and that's greater than 0.7 microcats per liter, that was associated with significantly lower odds of reaching 100 years. Numerically, it was a 43% lower odds. Now note that both of these biomarkers, uric acid and GGT, increase during aging. So if the goal is longevity, resisting their age-related decline may be an important factor for reaching 100 years or beyond. But on the other hand, which biomarkers are associated with a lower odds of living to 100 years? It's probably not just one or two biomarkers that we have to focus on to try to get to longevity. It's optimizing as many as possible. Both biomarkers that are associated with living to 100 years or longer, but then on the other side, limiting the biomarkers that may be able to shorten our ability to get to 100 years. So what are those? The first, when total cholesterol levels were less than 201 milligrams per deciliter, or less than 5.2 millimolar, that was significantly associated with a 34% lower odds of living to 100. Now, note that Many factors can impact the association for total cholesterol with various outcomes, and it's important to adjust the models for comorbidities as they can impact cholesterol levels towards the end of life. 
And a strength of this study is that they used an index that adjusted for many comorbidities, but they left out one. And I won't go into, the, go into it in this video, and they also left out BMI. And these are factors that could impact the association for relatively low cholesterol with odds of living to 100 years. In this case, a, sh a lower odds of living to 100 years. So I'm not, I wouldn't confidently say that lower is worse for living to 100 for total cholesterol. Stay tuned for that story coming up in an upcoming video. When glucose levels were higher than 108 milligrams per deciliter or greater than six millimolar, that too was associated with a lower odds, 40, 47% lower odds of living to 100 years. When creatinine was greater than 1.14 milligrams per deciliter or greater than 101 micromolar, that too was associated with a lower odds of 47% of reaching 100 years. When the liver enzyme ASAT, aspartate aminotransferase, was greater than 30.1 units per liter or greater than 0.5 microcats per liter, that was associated with a lower odds of reaching 100 years of 30%, a 30% lower odds. Now note that 30 units per liter for AST is within the reference range. So these data potentially again highlight that the reference range is not what may be optimal for health and potentially longevity. So using 30 as a cutoff should be on most of our radar. When alkaline phosphatase, ALP, was greater than 234 units per liter or greater than 3.9 microcats per liter, that was associated with a reduced odds of 26% of reaching 100 years. When lactate dehydrogenase was greater than 432 units per liter or greater than 7.2 microcats per liter, that was associated with a 34% lower odds of reaching 100 years. When iron was less than 73 micrograms per deciliter or less than 13 micromolar, that was associated with a 28% lower odds of reaching 100 years. And last but not least on this list, when total iron binding capacity was relatively high, greater than 358 micrograms per deciliter or 64.1 micromolar, that was associated with a 37% lower odds of reaching 100 years. So hopefully this is a good guide for those who are interested in longevity, who are tracking biomarkers, to try to get biomarkers into these ranges, whether it's biomarkers that may, may be associated with a greater odds of longevity or with reduced odds, limiting, reducing, resisting age-related changes for those biomarkers to increase our chances of living as long as possible. If you've ever wondered what's optimal for biomarkers, we'll have a new Patreon tier ded dedicated just to that. It currently includes 38, 33 biomarkers, the 33 here that are shown on this list, including uric acid, which then raises the question, what can we do to increase uric acid? And for that story, I post biomarker correlations following every blood test. I now have more than 60 blood tests since 2015, and those data are on Patreon. So if you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check it out. I also post daily in each of those two Patreon tiers. You can get early ad-free video access, and I offer blood, te blood test consults. So if you're interested in that, check it out. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount and affiliate links that you can use to test yourself that help support the channel, including ultalabtest.com, which is where I get the majority of my blood tests, the clearly filtered water filter, which I use every day, at-home metabolomics, we're now 17 tests in, oral microbiome composition, NED testing with Ginfinity, epigenetic testing with True Diagnostic, at-home blood testing with Cyfox Health, which includes the DNA methylation test Grimage, green tea, drink it every day, Diet tracking with chronometer, doing that too every day. Or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. We've also got merch, new merch, including figuring stuff out as my drug and the channel theme for conquer aging or die trying. So if you're interested in that, link in the video's description. And I've got on one of them right here. Thanks for watching. Hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.